Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks. And today, I got Larry Mass. You know? Yeah. And anyway, he wound up being, to this day, one of my best friends. He is, uh, I wish I could say his name. I don't want to do that to him for his, he, he runs a private security now in another section of Florida. But we see each other probably once a month, twice a month. And uh, he also told me when I got to that area, they called a big meeting to let everybody know this guy was in the area. And I wasn't in program or anything like that. I was just free. I didn't, you know, I never went into that part. Uh, so, you know, it's like, that's timing again, right? How do I run into yeah. this? You know, I run into him and now he sort of looked off, look, looked after me. If I, you know, a couple of times I got pulled over and I mentioned his name, they got on the phone and it's all right, you can go, you know, he's so things like that. I had a car stolen. They called another meeting saying something about the war because the car was all damaged. They, they said, oh, he's not bringing the war here. And he would just <laughs> at, he would sit in the back and laugh because he knew I moved on. I'm not, you know, there's really no ties left other than uh, other guys that left the life the same for whatever reasons, whether they made a deal, whether they went into the program, whether they retired, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys that talk, you know, I, I've spoken with a lot of active guys, you know, that don't have a heavy duty resent because they saw what happened. They just, they're, they're realistic, you know? Uh, I mean, your situation is a lot different from a lot of other people, you know, but you know what? A lot of people have situations and reasons, you know, you can be of an opinion. I appreciate that opinion. I do feel that way, but it doesn't, change the fact that there were rules put out okay and i abided by all of them i watched guys not abide by any of them and you know omerta is not the number one rule it's not the number five rule. it's a rule of and there's probably five that are important we talk about them all the time that one not uh attacking the boss not killing him not disrespecting him He's the boss forever and ever and ever. And you, whatever he says, if, and this was asked of me, if your mother's at her deathbed, will you come if we call you? And I remember Greg telling me I'd never go, but I, when I got straightened out, I said, yes. He said, so you say yes. <laughs> he coached me a little bit. So I had, you know, we, but you know what? We're all, we all on the same scumbag level. If we all say yes to that, that you leave your mother on her deathbed for what? For a group of drug dealing, backstabbing, treacherous mother you know think about it but we all say yes you know there's something so we're all on that yeah. you, you just you sold your soul to the devil right there by saying something like that you know uh yeah. but again also uh sleeping with somebody's wife i mean some people think that should be the number one because once you start doing that it's not family you know uh yeah. drugs of course you know how much drugs was going on in Cosa Nostra? Come on, everybody knows. But yeah, there, were, were there a lot of drug use going on in the yeah, crew? Use and sales. And guys, well, you just took the envelope and you knew, but here's the problem. Now, this young this kid is selling pot. You're taking 5000 a week. He gets pinched, and he's facing two years if, if he cops out. You don't allow him to cop out because, oh, now we're admitting you're selling drugs. You can't, you can't cop out. Now the kid gets 12 years. You know, so it's that's what I'm saying. So all those rules, yeah, you could zero on any one of them you want. Who's worse, me or John Gotti? John Gotti killed his boss. That's that's a horrible rule. You you just destroyed the structure. You know, you're yeah. not supposed to do that because now they could come and kill you. Vic Arena, what did he do? He went after Junior's position. He started whacking guys out on the that were loyal to Junior to take over that spot. Didn't he know that rule? Didn't Greg know that we're not supposed to sleep on his women when he allowed me to sleep with her and, and have this affair for 10 years? He knew that when I saw him putting a whole cartel together, drug people. It, now we weren't even Shylocks anymore. That was secondary. It was all about those bags coming in with drugs. So you're watching all these rules be broken. The one rule that I, I can honestly say I never saw broken, and I'm not saying nobody dealt with it, was counterfeiting. We're not supposed to deal with counterfeit money. It may make sense. We're making so much. We're so important to the neighborhood's cash flow. At one time, not anymore. Uh, 
why would we want fake money? That means every time somebody brings in and drops off a thousand dollars of juice to me or five thousand on a gambling debt, what if half of it is counterfeit money? Yeah, then you're you're stuck so, holding the bag with the money, right? That's why that rule. And like I said, I don't know anybody in close. Now it was it didn't count the credit cards because those were um, those were duplicates. Those were duplicates. Uh, they weren't even hot. They would, uh, but then we made up the fake tokens that we use at all the toll booths. That didn't count. The actual counterfeiting of cash was taboo. So all these rules are there, you know. So you just zero in on whichever ones you want to enforce, whichever one you don't, you know. And but but again, people like like going back to what got us on this path is, you know, you were you were going to give me a little bit of a a little leeway. But the rules are there, and if you don't live by them, or you you, you know, for whichever one, uh, you can't be part of life anymore. You know, yeah, I they they will shun you, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Listen, but even even me, I copped out. I made a deal, did what I had to do. Uh, but again, if you look at all the steps that happened that led to that, I don't have any regret. I don't have any. Uh, I could look in the mirror every day and say, I did. And I hear it from people all the time. I hear it from people all the time. I, I don't know what took you so long after hearing about it. You know, after, you know, hearing about well, it. How long, how long did you go before you decided to do that? Well, I was, I was in, in the can for, you know, for about a year listening to, uh, hearing guys like Carmine Sessa goes, then this one went. There was a whole list. They were clogging up the system. But then, and I could, and I tell this to people too. I wasn't even considering it for two reasons. The first reason, if Greg was alive and, it, and he wasn't bad, I would never put my family in that jeopardy because he would. There's nothing he wouldn't do to stop me from destroying him and his family and in the and their income of money. Nothing. He would, uh, and I, you know, I've said it, my, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, my wife, my dog, my cat, my neighborhood priest, anybody, that he thought I would not do it. So there was no way I would put any of those people in harm's way. And the other thing was, we had Jimmy on the limb, and I figured I could get, I knew, we already knew, he would do whatever I did, he'd come in if I copped out, whatever. That's how close we are. So we said, if I can use him as a negotiation ploy, let me fight this down. They were 25 years. I says, let me try for 22. They were stingy to cut the 20, 23. I said, but once I could get them to the lowest end, and I was hoping, which is never going to happen, I was hoping to get it down to 17 or 18. Then hit them with, I'll get Jimmy to come in if you give us another five years each off. That would make them heroes, that they caught the fugitive, and like to wind up like 13. So I did 10 anyway, because they never liked me. I, you know, I guess I gave up one of their own, you know. Yeah. So a, a corrupt FBI agent. Without him, they didn't need me. They said it several times, you know, when, when, because I walked out like three times after they, my lawyer, you know, tried to make a deal for me. Uh, they weren't going to let Jimmy in. They had this stupid roof, high end, like life. I said, what am I going to, you know, what's, what, what good am I going to get out of this? Finally, yeah. they said they'll let Jimmy in and uh, we continued on the path. And, uh, uh, but they, you know, I remember them telling, uh, well, my attorney telling me, they know everything. <laughs> they were telling me stuff about you that you didn't tell me. And then he would say something. So I forgot about that. You know, he says, you got to let me know. <laughs> you know I really yeah, you got to tell them everything, yeah. right? So many things I just didn't even remember, you know, uh, and it, you know, it's, it's so, but they didn't need me. They, like I said, between Greg and Carmine, they, they knew everything our faction did. They knew everything the family did. Uh, they had a, even before the war, they knew who was involved in what, uh, you know, so I couldn't really bring them. I had no, nothing new to give them until uh, it came out with the corruption. Because I had a lot, then I had a lot of stuff. I had, you know, I had the, the cell phone, well, shoe phone, that big old-fashioned phone that we would yeah. use, that Greg would use to call his girlfriend, who turned out to be the agent. We had the scanner with the code 
the secret code. It's a five digit code. You can't just make it up. I mean, you can't, you know, you, you could sit there for, for a lifetime and never come up with the five digits. We had the exact five digit code to listen to the FBI and the New York State Task Force talking about us, following us, following our enemies. We were following them as they were following Wild Bill. Can you imagine if they were talking on the on the walkie-talkie about you guys? Oh, they were. And and like, it, oh, so they were talking about well, you, and you're listening it was to the them. Time we came out of the house, loaded to the gills, guns, bulletproof vests. As soon as we pull out, and I forget what they call them, Charlie. They call themselves Charlie Cougar. They were driving Cougars. Uh, CP one. Carmine Purser goes, number one was Greg. CP1's pulling out. The other side was VO, Vicarina. VO1, and that was Wild Bill. VO2 was maybe Joe Scopo, or vice versa. So we're listening to them. And as soon as we heard that, we saw the car pull out down the block. So we get to the corner. There's another Cougar with, this is the funny part, with a, Chi uh, a Chinese guy and a blonde American. And back in those days, there was much of that going on. You know, you married your own kind. And there's yeah. and they're in the same exact cougar as the other one. So we made the right. Now we got two cougars following us. We come right around the block and we're listening to them. They say, all right, they're going back into the house where they came from. So we go in, we take the vests off, we leave the guns, we come out again. And we even leave the scanner, but we leave it with Linda. So she's listening to them and I'm on the shoe phone now. <laughs> So we still know what they're doing. So we pull back out. She says, all right, there's two of them following you. So I'm telling Greg's hysterical. Greg's laughing through the whole thing. Because he knows what's going well, on. First of all, he knows, right? And he knows we're not going to get pinched because we have nothing on us. But once they hear who he is, they're not going to pinch him. So, but I guess they had to watch you. Not all the lower level guys knew. I mean, those are details that, I don't know, it'll probably come out in 50 years when they give us Kennedy's information. You know, they keep holding it for 50 years till everybody's dead. So yeah. we go, we, we start driving. We're going to a meeting downtown. So we're driving. Now she says, oh, there's a third car following you. And a fourth car. Finally, there's like six cars following us. But we're on the BQE, busy highway. So some are passing us, some are coming, getting off the highway, getting on, like, so we don't know they're there. Finally, we get off at our exit. The five cars surround us at the light. 